Oh, there's just nothing about the simplicity and the sideways radio. I love the sideways radio. <laughs> in these radio. older cars. I mean, it just, they just, I wish newer people would actually, newer manufacturers would make cars like this, you know. This has style, has class. It actually, it's a car, Yeah. you know. Yeah, I always kind of looked at the, if you've never seen the way they put the radio in these classic uh, C3 Corvettes, right, C2? Is, is vertical. It's as though it's an afterthought. It's an hey, 8-track, right? Where can we put the radio? I don't know. Turn it on its side and shove it in there. <laughs> yeah. Where do we have space? Put it right there. Yeah. So this is a 1965 Corvette Stingray. And you were just saying that that is like the easiest book, which there's probably only three wires underneath the engine <laughs> no. that you have to worry about. So, I mean, it didn't get fuel, gas, or sparked. Those are the only three reasons why this thing wouldn't run. It's, it's the, the owner's manual, unlike owner's manuals today, is, is simple, it's easy to read, it's actually kind of fun to read. It's like, like reading a little kid's coloring book. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna put this back inside the car. And once again, I'd like to thank you all out there in the internet land to another Dr. Beasley's live detailing class with yours truly, Robin, I mean Batman, I mean no <laughs> Robin, I mean Mike, uh, and yes, me, the trusty sidekick, I am Batman. Right? No, I'm Batman. You're Robin. You're okay. the sidekick. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so first of all, let me get my little spiel done here. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And every time that somebody likes, follows, anything like that, helps them with the algorithm. So that way more people get turned on to this stuff. And plus, that way you know when we're going live. So <laughs> I see we have this. You have it taped up. You have plethora of tools over here. Yes. What exactly are we doing today? We are going to restore the plexiglass rear window on the removable hardtop on this 1965 Corvette. And uh, if we're here, look. How, how bad would you be to find something like this? Oh, you know, Did they you, come originally plexiglass. Yeah, yeah, they're plexiglass. There's probably a replay. I've never looked to see, but uh, the the more important thing is is don't make a mistake in the first place. You know, because yeah. this is an all original car, and that the guy that I uh, work I work do a lot of work on these classic Corvettes for a holy a, cow. Oh, it's really bad. <laughs> they wash it with a Brillo pad. It looks like it, huh? Don't worry, I'm going to bring you guys in close so you can see this. I mean, it literally looks like they. They took a Brillo but pad I here. detail a lot of these classic Corvettes for him, but he searches like uh, uh, eBay and Craigslist, and he, his, his wheelhouse is 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. Doesn't want a 67, doesn't want a 73. But he likes to buy them low mileage, all original, original paint, original interior, original engine. And, and so the last thing he wants to do, I'm going somewhere with this. I know, take he us there. He doesn't want to replace this. He wants it to be original. original. So I don't yeah. want to make a mistake. So I'm going to yeah. show you how to polish this out to be clear like a piece of glass without making a mistake. All right, cool. Um, do we have any other announcements that you need? Um, you know, we can do that at the end of the show, but- okay. um, uh, we'll, we'll save it. Yeah, Teaser big class. At the, at the end. Big announcement. And uh, I, there's somebody over in the shadows over but, there, so I'm going to walk off sure. over here, so. So, and just to know, um, we're waiting for the delivery of a 1973 246 Dino Ferrari, which is gonna arrive here while we're filming. It's just a scheduling mishap. And it's gonna be here, and we may be using this next week for a class on machine dry sanding, because they want me to sand this thing down and buff it out. My good friend Dan, D Dr. Frank. Details here. What a great car. And uh, Dan was just uh, coming by, so he popped in, and uh, I showed him what we're gonna do, and said he's welcome to kind of hang out. Maybe I need an assistant, he can hand me towels, things like that. But Dan, you've taken my big three-day class in the past. Yeah. And you're, you're a professional detailer. You've been doing this yep. for years, but you still took the class. Well, I'm getting some stuff ready to go. Why don't you tell people what you thought of that? Um, I've been in the business uh, almost 20 years, and I started out on the street with a lot of guys. I started working really hard in the industry. All the years, I kept looking for just this, where's the place I'm going to go to learn everything that I want to learn about auto detailing. Um, I found Mike at Auto Geek, and, and I, I was like, man, when he finally came to 3D, and then he, then he came here to Dr. Beasley's. I knew I had to take his class. I walked in the door, and I'm telling you, I was standing in the hall on the first day. On the first day, we were standing down. We were standing down with the big uh, panel van. Remember the panel van? Yeah, it was a 1955 Chevy uh, panel delivery. Red. Street rod. Gorgeous. Red two-tone. And I'm standing in polishing on the first day. I've never touched a sander. So I really, I really was blown away. I, I was so tired on the first day, Mike. <laughs> I was so beat. I was not expecting. We got here at 
And when I'm telling you, I walked in, had a donut, and we were working. And I think I worked the whole day, three days straight. By the boat day, I was dead. No chairs, no sitting, no PowerPoint. No PowerPoint. I bring in cool cars and no. boats in really bad shape so I can teach yeah. you the most techniques. Yeah. And uh, a good class, though, huh? Mike, I want to say thanks for everything, man. This is the best class. I really want to check out this bar and see these scratches. Okay. So let's... Uh, Let's, okay, hey, well, thanks for stopping by. Um, so this is plexiglass. I just want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, plexiglass is a trademark name for a type of plastic. It's very soft. It's used a lot in the 50s and the 60s. As technology changed, just like the phone you buy today is 10 times better than the phone you bought last week, plastic has changed, and plastic became harder, so it resists oxidation better. The problem with the becoming harder is you and me, it's really hard to work on. I have never found any product or process that'll pull scratches out of Lexan and make it look like pure glass. And that's the expectation if you're buffing on someone's Corvette T-top that fell off in the highway and it's all scratched up, you gotta fix it, make it look as clear as a piece of glass. I've never seen that done. But plexiglass is a different animal. It's soft, it's easy to sand, it's easy to buff. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you. I've already sanded down the inside of this using the same process I'm going to show here and then buffed it out. Now, there's no way to tell if I got everything out because there's so, let's show them, Yancy. Yeah. There's just so many swirls and scratches. <laughs> I told you guys it was it's horrible. Okay. And the inside looked the same way. So um, I went ahead and just followed my procedure for doing this type of work on the inside. Cross my fingers, it looks good. We won't know till we buff out the outside. There's no way to check until you buff out the outside. But here's the deal. I'm gonna buff out just sand and just buff half this back window. And if I find something I miss, it's no big deal. I'll pop the top off and put it back on a set, bunch of tables, fix it, and put the top back on. So, if you got everyone on the inside done, you're a man. <laughs> that's, that's by the way, nasty. this is the fourth or fifth back window that I've done this process to, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. So I want to show you right here. A lot of people are interested in this. This is the, the six millimeter drive unit that is now available in the United States for the Flex Pixie. This is something I asked the engineers at Flex specifically to make for me because when this thing came out, everybody goes, hey, look at that for paint polishing. I go, no, that's going to be a great three inch sander. The problem is, is it came with the rotary drive unit, a three millimeter and a 12 millimeter. Three millimeters too anemic. It wouldn't maintain sanding disc rotation. 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter so big, if you try to sand next to an edge or a raised body line, you end up hitting it and then you're going to burn through. So I said, make me a six, a seven or eight. I don't care which one they sent me a six and now it's uh now it's they say that's uh it's history so what i have on here is 1500 grit k1500 by kovacs this is the the eagle abrasives brand kovacs and this is also just to show you this is their backing plate and the thing that makes this unique is the microscopic hook size and what that does is keeps all the sanding action on the top surface to really flatten out orange peel on car paint but in our case we're just working on plexiglass so what I'm gonna do first is something I teach in all my sanding classes when I teach machine sanding and that's called edging a panel so I'm gonna go around and sand the edges first then I'll knock out the easy to buff big section and I'm gonna bump this thing all the way up to the four setting and if you watch you notice I, I use this kind of perky jerky movement and what I'm doing is that technical perky jerky yes is I do that so I can kind of watch and monitor my progress by pulling the buff the sander out of the way. And this is 1500 grit and this thing sands really fast. So you don't want to, you don't want to, it's just like anything, you don't want to stay in one place too long, you want to keep it moving. And the reason we're sanding this instead of just buffing it is, let me show you the, see the plastic coming off? So you want to take and just hold this against the towel like this, clean it off. Also wipe the dust off. Don't put the sanding just back down on the dust. You'll just load the paper back up. But the reason we're doing this, can you capture these deeper gouges over here? I could put my finger here if that helps. Yeah. They run this way. Okay, so there's a bunch of sporadic or random deeper scratches throughout this windshield. And what's going to happen is if we only buff it, we'll pull out all the shallow stuff and then all the deeper stuff will remain. And um, that would be okay if this was just, uh, uh, if the expectations were this were, were not real high, but the owner said, get it as good as you can. So instead of just buffing, I'm gonna go ahead and sand it. Plus in the future, if anybody's watching this, you know, you can make your own judgment call whether you wanna sand or just buff. 
But at least by doing this, I can show the complete process. You can dive into the process anywhere you want to. Okay, so this is called edging a panel. I've edged that panel. And I'm going to come back and refine that using 2500. But first, I'm going to knock out the big flats, easy to buff areas. This is the Flex FX3411 cordless DA sander. And um, the orbit stroke on this is only 1.6 millimeters. So it's pretty small. Um, and so I've actually had people say, Mike, you can't use it. It won't work. Well, watch this. I'll show you that it works. <laughs> Wow, it works really good. See all the plastic coming off? So 1.6 millimeter with 1500 grit. I mean, look, it's just sanding like nobody's business on this thing. I will have this uh, sand, uh, this whole sanding system in Chicago in April for our big five-day class. Rod Kraft and I are teaching wet sanding and machine dry sanding. And I think one of our training cars is a green AC Cobra. Pretty cool. So Original? Gonna, uh, no, it's a, it's a replica. <laughs> so, you know, if you call a... Uh, if you call a replica a kit car, the guy that owns it will get pissed. It's a replica. Okay, so I've went over this four times, and I'm pretty confident that this is removed. At least when I look, I don't see any deeper gouges anywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back over to the peanut polisher. Oh, I already had 25, so this is 2,500 grit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refine uh, 1,500 to 2,500. Again, I'm gonna go all the way up to the high speed, the four setting on this. And one thing about sanding, and any of you seasoned professionals, you're, you know what I'm saying is true. Every time you move to a higher grit, the most important thing is you gotta make sure you refine all the sanding marks, 100% of them. Or when you come back and start buffing, you're gonna notice that you're struggling to get some of the sanding marks out, because they're deeper. So no matter what you do, you've gotta make sure that you refine to the next level each time you move up in different levels. Now the good news about plexiglass is it's soft, so it buffs easy. So, um, so you'd rather do this than polish out glass? Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm kind of getting burnt out on polishing glass. Uh, it's a good workout for the deltoids, that's for sure. By the way, um, I polished the rear window on a 1970 Superbird. Uh, it was a 10 year restoration, it's got a 426 Hemi. You can find that right up on the Dr. Beasley's. Um, oh, look at, can you capture this? Look how the uh, sanding with. 2500 is starting to make it less hazy, so it's refining it, so it's making it more clear. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty easy to see. Um, but that that Superbird was in a car show in Palm Beach this last weekend at the what's called the Palm Event. I'd never heard of it, but it took two prestigious awards. And I did, uh, I sanded down the back window, starting with 180 grit, buffed it out till it was perfect, and then I also did the paint correction and ceramic coating on that car using, of course, all Dr. Beasley's products. So it's always fun when you see your work take prizes like that. And that's a real special car. It's a factory 426 Hemi car with the pistol grip. I mean, it's vitamin C orange Superbird. I mean, this is getting more cooler than that. Okay, so we're done with this one. Now I'm gonna switch this over to 2000. I ran out of 2500 in my last detailing class when we dry sanded a boat and a 1941 Chevy a pickup street rod. So I, I would go to 25, but I don't have any. Yancey, won't you ask me a question like this? Mike, shouldn't you be wearing a respirator? Hey, Mike. Shouldn't you be wearing a respirator? Yes, I should be, and if I wasn't making a video, I would. Um, I'm doing so much little sanding here, most of it's just going into the towel that I'm not too worried about it. Plus, we're all gonna die of something. At least I'm gonna die doing something I love, sanding cars, buffing out cars. Okay, so I went over that, whoops, twice. This will be the third time. And again, the goal here 
is just to 100% refine all my sanding marks from 1500 to 2500, or in this case, 2000. Okay, look at all the plastic look. comes off with a 1.6 millimeter sander. So this says two things. One is this thing works really good on plastic and paint. It doesn't work good on boats. We tried this in my last boat class and switched back over to eight millimeter gear driven beasts. Uh, but it does work great on paint and as you can see plastic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one more step. Even though this is a soft material and it would buff out quickly, since I have 3000, I'm going to go ahead and sand to 3,000. In your world, let your budget be your guide. Come on in. Come on in. Are you here with the uh, Dino? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Let's open the door and bring it on in. Uh, bring it in forward if you don't mind. Forward. Yeah, drive it in forward. Okay. This is what I love about live detailing classes. You never know what's going to happen. But this is a functioning shop here, so I don't mind. All right, I'm getting off of you. I don't mind having... Uh, car come in. Check that bad boy out. Alright, I'm back. That looks cool, Greg. Um, as you can see, we're filming live right now, but what just pulled in is a 1973 246 Dino. And um, my good friend Greg is asking me to do uh, what I call scuff and buff. Yeah, you guys don't want to see him so polish on. A like scuff and buff is kind of like a sand job, but you're just going to use high grit like 3000 to kind of schmoo over the surface, remove any dye back. There's a those technical sh terms. Schmoo back, schmoo, yeah. And then, of course, buffing it and getting it all prepped for show. Anything I need to know about starting that car? No, it's not talking about your car. I will say, just show you real quick. If you have a second. Sure. You don't have any of that flips also that I can pick up over here, do you? No. Right. Yeah. So let me show you the we were just there. We were where we're at to this over place. here. But anyhow, this is where he did the repair. I can see a lot of DA. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, know, DA part, Santa Marta. Yeah. Did a repair like right about in here. A little repair. Good idea. Then go to the into um, the body so, car. But the whole car has got you know. And this I can is see the blend line right showcase here. Showcase showing you, you go it, over the car with the client issues. while yeah. it's yeah. So, here. Yeah, like so that way they know the expectations and you know what they're There is a roll of a can of paint. Oh yeah. Um, he didn't either it got hit again or, or whatever I asked uh, I wanted this to touch up you can see it in the light that where it's it's banged the trunk has banged it either okay he missed it but I've got some of the paint that he just painted okay. with it we can touch it up it's it's sure. base coat clear coat hit that little spot okay and just put some clear over and then you want me just to lightly sand it with something like this 3000 grit yeah to go over the and just you know clean up a lot of this as you look across you know yep. a lot of the stuff you yep. know a lot of the dieback and shrinkage and confidence is high there's plenty of clear it, it should be i mean the car hasn't been done okay you know me greg i'll give it my best you want the windows closed or uh yeah go ahead and put them up and uh okay and i'll jump on this next week then okay so uh jancy you showed them over here what i finished here yep okay so this has been machine sanded out to 3000 grit so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start using a rotary polisher and the Dr. Beasley's NSP 150. Now this is what we would you would call a compound, and I have the same thing in a pour-off bottle because these come in 32 ounce bags. So you just pour them off into squeeze bottles. Most important thing, anytime you're using a rotary, you've got to make sure that pad is clean. And I run this thing all the way around to the back, into the center, and that pad that's clean. Okay. Whoops. So this is one of the most important steps too after sanding is actually removing 100% of your sanding marks. Let me just buff a little section right here, Yancy. This would be the third time. Here's the fourth time. 
I went over that, and I want to just show you how what I mean when I say plexiglass is soft. So just four passes, and I pulled out 100% of my sanding marks. There's holograms there, but there's no sanding marks. If only marks. glass was that easy, right, if Mike? If only glass. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, just a tiny bit of product around these edges. And I always, I always do the hardest part, and that's the edges. So let me just knock this out, and then I'll knock out the big area, and we'll go to the polishing step. <laughs> You know, the owner of this car is watching too, so I can't make any mistakes. Now, do you have to worry about how much heat you build up on that? Why yeah, that's a good, that? yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, years ago I wrote this article. I think I have over a thousand articles on the internet. And it was called The Fight or flight, fight or flight method of checking surface temperature. So instead of getting an infrared thermometer, just put your hand on it. And if you can hold a conversation, you're okay to keep buffing. If you put your hand on it and go, ow! Take your hand off real fast, it's probably too hot. Let it cool off. But that's, uh, but yeah, plastic, you don't want to get it hot. I probably just woke a bunch of people up there, huh, Anthony? Did I wake you up? So I'm running this on speed three, which is usually my favorite speed for this flex cordless rotary. Rotary seems to be a lost art form. You know, if I shared a video on the Dr. Beezy's website of the guys using a rotary on a 1941 Chevy pickup, and it really brought all the People, I would just use the words passionate about their opinions to comment on that. And, and it's all good. I've learned a long time ago, and you know this, Nancy, that you can't argue with people. But everybody thought it was wrong to buff that truck out with the wool pad. What they don't understand is we hand sanded it with 1500, followed by machine sanding with 2500, and then started working out with the rotary pad on a rotary. So good intentions, I'm sure, but they had no idea what they were talking about. I should have put a tape line down, Yancy. Oh, because then you might have had a line there. I wouldn't have. Yeah, we don't want a, a line in the plastic. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have. <laughs> That's Good why. idea, bad, 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 just bad. That's why I did it. I didn't want to have a line there, but it does make for a strong demarcation line. Oh, believe me, there's one there. I, I can see it. And I just like to say the word demarcation. And then, of course, what I'm doing is I'm using my overhead light to see when the sanding marks are gone, and then when they're not gone, come back, obviously, and put some more product down and do some more buffing. Not even warm. Okay. Good.
I can actually see through the glass now. What's that now? I said I can actually see through the glass now. Yeah. So let me clean my pad here. I think I got about 95% of the scratches out. Um, I can see after I've cleared up this side that when I did the inside, I've actually got, it looks just like a wiping streak. And uh, I saw Dan still here. Maybe Dan had volunteered to jump in there and clean this back window for me. Aw, Dan. If I just volunteer him. You Come did. here, Dan, let me show you. Uh, yeah. If you come here and look, see the little wiping streaks? So clean towel over there, and there's a glass cleaner uh, right up here. Actually, um, yeah. Use a little bead. Whoops, a little bead here on there probably work great. Okay, got a little bit of shame marks right, right here in the back. So I didn't get all my, I didn't refine as well out here where it's hard to reach to as I did all the close areas. So that's why I'm spending a little more time here. But they're coming out. Thanks, Sam. That's better. Okay. Let's From here, it looks a lot better than what it was before. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it is so much better. Um, I still have some sanding marks right here. So instead of buffing more, I'm just going to uh, re-sand yeah, with We're already at 30 minutes if you want. Just if you do that one side, you still got to do the other side anyway. So That's after the video. Okay. Let me just hit this. In the real world, I would just, uh, I would resand too. On live camera though, uh, everybody's always trying to find a time to say, hey, gotcha. So I don't want to give him any reason. Now watch how fast those tanning marks are going, people. There we go. Mucho better. Ding dang. Just a little spot right there. All right, uh, I'm gonna answer this comment right here. The bottom oh. of the, <laughs> what you're seeing there, the bottom two to three inches of the glass seem hazy. Well, I'm going to show you why that's hazy. You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's hold on, on the hold, inside. Hold on. Yeah. That's due to the fact that we have a black... Um, it's an apron. Yeah, apron in there, so that way we can get the thing. But that's the reason why you have the haziness that you're seeing. So it's not that he hasn't sanded in there. 
It's just that's what is showing up with the haziness of it. So, so those sandy like marks are on the inside. No, 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 no. Yeah. They're seeing the, the apron. They're thinking that it looks hazy. Yeah, no, no, it's not that. Okay, if it was, if the aprons weren't there, there's white paint, and it'd be harder to see the before and after difference. So now I'm going to switch over to NSP95. Again, I always pour mine off from the 32 ounce squeeze bottles into the, or the bags into the squeeze bottles. And for this, just three pea sized drops. Now I'm just going to pull out my hologram scratches from the fibers of the wool pad. <laughs> Okay, holograms are gone. Switch to a fresh clean towel here. Fresh clean towel. And this should look pretty good. Um, because a lot of times I do show car quality work. Let me wipe this off. Okay, can you capture like here and here? There's some still sanding marks in here on the inside so it ain't gonna look perfect. Let me get All that. Right, let me Whoops. find my angle. There it is. All right, now just follow the light, people. There it is, that's the bad, as we move <laughs> over, over, come down. Can we throw the light it? on there? No, just me moving the camera. So now you can see that there's no lights. Okay, and then the and last step. Lines. Oh man, God, look at how, where that came from. That is just a huge difference. This is like a piece of glass now. Yeah, you can actually see in there. Okay, then the next thing I just want to cover is, you know, look, everybody can get to shine however they want to. This is, I like to say it. But uh, years ago, I buffed out a Ferrari P3 or P4. They only built like three in the world. And people notice I started with the Beast, gear-driven, eight millimeter orbital. But they noticed I finished with, um, it was actually Meguiar's G100, which is the copy of the Porter Cable. And then someone asked me in my write-up, which is still over on the Geek Forum, Mike, why did you switch over to the, the G100? And I said, because free spinning polishers will tend to finish out nicer, more consistently on softer paints than gear driven. And this Ferrari P3 or P4, whichever it was, had single stage red paint that was really soft. So in order to get that show car finish, instead of messing with the gear driven, I just went to the free spinning tool. I'm not a big fan of free spinning tools just because you, know, you always gotta watch to see if the pad is rotating. But anyway, kind of back to what I was going to say. So for most people, that looks pretty good. But because this is a soft material of three piece size drops, I would switch over to a port cable, soft foam finishing pad, and then just perfect that plastic before we seal it with the ceramic coating. OK, product spread out, uniform layer of abrasive technology. Now I'll push on it that maintain pad rotation and then just make a few passes over it. And what this will do is if, and that's the key word, if there was any semblance of micromarring left by a polishing pad and a gear driven orbital, this free spinning orbital will work that out Plus, I'm using the Dr. Beasley's NSP45, which as I've covered in plenty of these online classes, works awesome on soft, soft paint that Micromar is easy. And, um, and we could go back to that 69 GTO that we worked on here, Yancey. Okay, so there's uh, NSP45. If it works good on soft paint, then it means it would also work good on soft plastics. In fact, there's a write-up on the auto, or the, um, the Dr. Beasley's blog 
recently I put it up there, I detailed a 1964 Amphicar. And one of the things I showed in that... Man, yeah. that car just will not go away now, will it? <sighs> one of the things I showed on that was I showed how to uh, buff out flexible windows like a Jeep has. This had a back window in it uh, that was flexible and it had just as bad a scratch as in this. And I actually took a rotary polisher to Where's that your back light? window. Uh, where is my light? I have plenty right up right, right behind you. Right behind me. Yes. Okay. All right. Go to the before. Oh, there's the bad. All right. Now just go straight across. I just see a haze from where you're wiping, but yeah, there you go. It's like a piece of glass. And, um, and then the last step would be um, Dr. Beasley's. I'm a big fan of their MX coating. Um, so this is the paint coating builder. Just one little spritz. And for this plastic, I'm just going to use a soft foam applicator pad. And one of the things I notice about this product is it really clarifies clear plastic. Just maximizes the clarity. Put that on. Give it a soft wipe. So let's let it set two or three minutes. But... Uh, for these live classes, you know, uh, you always got to abbreviate everything. And then the next part would be putting on the actual coating. And if you look over here, I put a letter C on this applicator Aww, for the coating builder or for the coating, P for the paint coating. So I put the paint coating here. Now I'm going to flip it over. And uh, that's why I can use one pad for two things without cross contaminating. So that's why I did that. Okay. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Get some reflection going on. And then for the MX, uh, nano, nano resin MX uh, ceramic coating, you only wait about 30 seconds to a minute. You'll see it start to flash, then go ahead and wipe it off. And then I would call this side done. Let me get a, a fresh clean towel for the final wipe there. Oh, beautiful. And I can tactically feel that surface go slippery. And of course, that'll help in the future to just keep it cleaner because nothing's going to want to stick to it. Here's a question. Since you're sanding and stuff, you don't need to clay that all off or anything, do you? Or would no. you need to? No, you know, uh, that's a good question. And I'm glad they asked it. Okay, we're done. Um, in my car detailing classes, um, we always clay the paint on the car we're going to sand down before we sand it because in most cases we're, i'm bringing in cars like this 55 del rey back here or this 65 corvette they got custom paint jobs the paint is thicker but while that car that vehicle is in the paint booth a lot of times when they finish painting say the lower panels whatever some of the dry spray circulates around lands on the car so it's got texture to it and if and you can sand that off with your sanding disc obviously but what i like to do is clay it off and save my expensive sanding discs for uh, where I really want them, and that's to uh, level service texture or remove orange pills. So we always clay everything. In this particular case, um, I did a waterless wash on this car. This is a garage kept car. And I, I felt with the baggy test, I just didn't feel nothing on the surface, so I didn't clay it, but you could. Uh, but after machine sanding it with 1500 grit, 2000 grit, 3000 grit, compounding with a wool pad, NSP 150, machine polishing with a foam cutting pad, the Beast and NSP 95, and then finish polishing with a port cable and NSP 45, this thing's clean. <laughs> it is truly like a piece of glass. So. All right, you done? I'm done. When this video's over, I'll do their side. <laughs> okay. Hey, Yancey here, the voice from the nether. You will hear me as I read your questions or your comments, and he will answer them. So just want to let you know, hi. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, Mike. We yes. have uh, Kevin coming in here. Says, bought a used AMG polished to perfection. When I prepared the windshield for coating, the GL glass took out the little chip fills they must have doctored it in. There are 30 plus glass chips. Solutions. I have no good solution for that. When you've got chips like that, maybe in some cases you don't actually take on the job. You know, Those might have to be filled, correct? Yeah, they have to be filled by a, one of those glass mechanics. But 
And I appreciate the question, but let's try to keep it focused on pl plexiglass polishing. Uh, shoot me an email, mike at drbeasleys.com, or give me a call on my cell phone tomorrow, 760-515-0444, and I'll see if I can't help you work through this. Um, whenever I bring in windshields that have rock chips, I put a little piece of tape over them so I don't fill them full of uh, polish splatter, which then becomes very hard to get out, but that's just how I do it. Okay. Uh, here's your next one, and this is a very good thing because this is a very popular subject. Um, are you into side-by-sides? Do you know what a side-by-side -side is? Oh, for sure. Okay, the book here. Book. Optical clarity detailing. Glad to have the wind day classes back. Glad to be back. A lot of plexiglass are on side-by-sides too. All that off-roading, they get hammered. Yeah. Now, would the coating help protect that? For sure. Okay. Yeah. For sure. I got a, you know, uh, I got a 55 Bel Air coming in that the guys always put car wax on and he's, he's older. He says, I'm older. I don't feel like doing all that work. Will the coating help? And I said, you bet. It's going to make the surface more slippery. So it'll stay cleaner longer. It'll wash and dry faster and safer. And then the other thing is, is it'll hold up longer here in South Florida. A uh, car wax isn't going to last that long. Uh, we got temperatures out here over hundred degrees all the time in the summer. Okay, we have one more, and I want to say if I can read that little itty bitty thing. I think he's coming in from Brazil. Um, he's saying hello. It's Marcio Martelliano, whatever. I can, I'm sorry, it's like that long of a name. <laughs> but I want to say, I want to say it's Brazil. So thank you for tuning in from another country. Uh, we have Saint Hilas, Hildas, headlamp and bike screen guy. Hello, Mike and Nancy. He's coming in from the UK. Hey. Uh, okay, we have Michael. Mike saying hi to Mike. Hey, hey Mike. Mike Phillips, Pro Detail. That's Michael Schreier. Schreier. Hey, Michael. Uh, we have another one. Dave Myers, let's roll. <laughs> I love this, you know, but people, I'm Batman. He's Robin. Yeah. All right, we have Trent McGraw coming in here. Batman Robin. What's up, guys? Uh, and Chris coming in. Uh, yeah, I'm running down a lot of these really quick. Why are you not going? Chris, all right, oh. back in it on Wednesday. Yes, we are, Chris. Um, like I said, we have a bunch of high. Where are you not going? Okay, then we have Camille. Greetings from Poland. So we had Brazil, England, Poland. The UK? Uh, I guess England's the UK. Okay, here, here's, here's, here's a good question. Tundra Whisperer. This guy always comes in with some really good questions. Can the same technique be applied to glass as well or a completely different approach? Well, and we've covered that in a live broadcast. Um, it's, a different, it's the same process, but different, different types of sanding discs and different tools. For glass sanding, you're going to be using a rotary polisher. I know that can sound like grinding, but you've got to have an interface pad so you've got some cushion there. And uh, the ones I've done in the past, I've started out with either 180 grit or 360 grit. But the hardest part about sanding glass, the whole thing is hard. There's nothing easy about it. But it's breaking through the glaze. Like when you look at a piece of glass, it's very smooth. You've got to break through that. And it's only the really low grits that'll do that. And then once you break through, um, future grits, so 360, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, however high you want to go, now that they can bite that surface because you broke through it. Uh, but it's a very, a very long, arduous process. I would suggest go back to our live collection of videos, look for the glass polishing where we did it on a 1987 Chevy Silverado with horrible wiper marks. That car was here on Monday, and I, I, you stand back 10 feet, you can't see a scratch on it, so it really came out good. Okay, now, Michael, not you, Michael, another okay. Michael. Okay. Michael, you probably have the number one question on here because if you do this wrong, what you're asking will happen. Okay, so here's his question. What ways can you avoid distortion? And back to you. Well, just, uh, it's called, that's a good question. U-M-R, Uniform Material Removal. When you watched me sand this, you saw that I did overlapping passes by 50% in a crosshatch pattern. That is about the safest way to create UMR, uniform material removal. If I were to take this three inch disc and stick it right there and sand and talk to you and come back and buff it out, you'd see a, you'd see a, um, a 
you'd see a, a variable in there. You'd see a, a depression. So don't do stupid stuff. <laughs> Keep the sander moving. You know, these, don't do stupid stuff. You know, and it's always a good idea to practice on something that's not important. But you know, this is a unique project. In fact, in, I've been in this detailing industry since the 1970s. I've never seen anybody live sand down the back window of some other dude's Corvette and polish it out like a piece of glass. So I, I love doing this kind of stuff. But I got a lot of experience doing it, and one of the tips I'm supplying with you is make overlapping passes, and um, I don't leave the sander in one place. Keep it moving like you saw me doing. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> okay, Tender Whisper coming in again. He's got another good question. If I don't own a rotary polisher, can I do this step with a DA? I want to say that was probably when you were removing what? the sanding marks. Okay, um, yeah, the, the only time I use the rotary on here is for removing the sanding marks. All the sanding was done with the DA, dual action. This is a... Right, one, no, I think yeah. he's wanting to remove, um, do the step with the DA. Uh, um, I think it was right when you were doing the rotary because yeah. he doesn't have a yeah. rotary. You, you could, and there's a lot of guys out there that I've experienced recently on Dr. Beasley's Facebook that say using a wool pad on a rotary is the wrong way to do it, but you just saw me do it without a problem. The only thing about using a foam pad on an orbital is it's just going to take longer and it's less efficient. See, what people forget is when it comes to a wool pad, these fibers are an abrasive. You know, they're, they're, they're like little abrasive fingers cutting the surface, working with your abrasive technology. When you use a foam pad, it has a uniform surface texture. It's nowhere near as aggressive. So yes, you can pull out sanding marks with a foam pad and an orbital polisher, any brand of orbital, free spinning or gear driven. It's just going to take longer. And the key word is it's less efficient. Here Here's what you can do is go down to Harbor Freight, pick up a cheap 100, you know, cheap rotary polisher. Problem solved. You've got a rotary. Okay. Um, I love this comment. This is actually <laughs> a really good comment. Cody coming back in here again. Hey, Mike Yancey, glad you're back. Very good video. I was today years old when I learned how to polish plexiglass. Thank you. So you taught somebody today, Mike. Hey. And, and, and here's the deal is, you know, this is a good skill to have. There's other windows out there that are made of plexiglass. I think the old T-Birds had them. There's a lot of classics that do. I don't know about new stuff, but this procedure I use will work on anything. This bow windshields, old antique bow windshields. I've restored a whole bunch of those in my life. So it's just a good skill set to have. And of course, watching the steps, how I edge the panel first, then knocked out the big areas, come back and pulled my center marks out, pulled out my holograms. I mean, that is a, a professional process. You leave results you can be proud of when this thing's pulled out in the sun and people are looking at it in full sun it looks it'll look flawless okay um got another one coming in from cody which is this was a good one because i don't remember you saying anything about this um how much pressure did you apply when sanding and then on buffing so how hard were you oh, pushing good, down good questions so with both of these it's just a little bit more than the weight of the tool mostly it's so that's the sanding step yeah the sanding it's mostly so you can just keep the face of that sanding just flat you don't want it warbling around you don't want to be digging the edges in so you want to keep it flat and it just helps to put a little light pressure on it so just a little bit more than the weight of the tool when i went to the rotary though i bumped my speed up to the three or four setting and I'm applying about 10 pounds of pressure easy to cut those sanding marks out. And if you watched, a couple times I touched this with my hand to make sure I wasn't getting it too hot. One of the problems I ran into, and this is just part of doing things live, is right in here, there are some sanding marks that I, th I thought I didn't get out. The problem is, is they're on the inside. So before this video started, I pulled this top off, set it on some tables, and I made a video of this. I sanded it and buffed it, but because there's so many swirls on the outside, I can't look to see if everything's gone. It's just too messy. I knew I would find out once I cleared up this side. Um, kind of working The, the both bigger ways. picture point being is that when I pull them sanding marks out, I'm taking this tool here, you know, and I'm, I'm pushing on it. I'm pushing down about 10 pounds of pressure. Oh, we got a shiny spot in the paint now. <laughs> Now I gotta do the whole car. All right. Uh, okay, here's another query, Richland. Coming in here. Uh, how how many hours total would you say that you need to do on that window? How many hours? Well, um, um, I, t I, I sanded the inside and timed myself. Uh, I have a video. The video is 38 minutes long. So going through the same process you saw here, only doing the entire thing was 38 minutes. So um, most of the time when I've done these, I've knocked them out in about two hours, but it give yourself three hours because you have to unbolt, you know, you have to, un these old cars, um, 
they're held on through a, a series of latches and a series of bolts. You know, so you have to first unbolt it, and then you have to have a buddy come over and help you lift it off. And then what I did is I put two six-foot uh, banquet tables out here side by side, and then I took my famous or infamous orange blanket to lay to lay that top down on so I didn't scratch the paint on the roof. And, you know, then I started wrestling with it. You, I'll put the video up and you'll see it, but um, maximum three hours if you're jumping on it and you're using good abrasive technology. So. Okay, then let's do last one here. It'll be Tim coming in. I had the pleasure of meeting both of you at MTE. Truly my pleasure. Thank you for these live tutorials. And share mm -hmm. it with your friends. We need, to, we need to grow our viewership. You know, um, I love doing these things, but instead of seeing like 1,000 people mm -hmm. look at it, we'd love to see like 10,000 people look at it. It's all good information. And the, the interesting thing about this is everything that I show, you could use those techniques with whatever brand of product you're using. We hope at some point you'll check out the Dr. Of Beasley course we program. want it to be Dr. But Beasley. I teach technique, okay? Uh, correct technique. All right. So, uh... We are good with that. I do believe that we are right about time. We're at 55 minutes. Um, so watch yourself before you trip yep, and yep, fall because yep. I'd hate to capture that on film. <laughs> uh, or digital or what would that be called? It's not uh, digital. On, on disc. Disc, yes. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned something. I mean, I know one person learned one thing. It was today years old, so that was amazing. I love seeing those comments. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you have a big old board over there. I do. And can you actually read all that? I can. All right, out of boy. Uh, let's see. You know, sometimes I, if you watch these videos, I got glasses on. Sometimes I got contacts in. So here's the difference. I wear glasses when it's important. Okay. I got to see what I'm doing. I'm nearsighted. So I want to be able to see I'm getting all the sending we're starting. I'm not burning melting plastic or paint or whatever it is. But uh, we have a five day class coming up in Chicago, Illinois at the Dr. Beasley's headquarters. And let me just rattle off all the topics and the talent that will be there. The first two days is going to be a extreme paint correction where Rod Kraft from Griot's Garage and myself will be teaching wet sanding by hand and then we're going to be teaching dry sanding by hand, dry sanding by machine and I'm pretty sure we've confirmed a green AC Cobra as the training vehicle. So in our classes we don't use demo hoods, you work on the real deal. Well the best way to learn is actually yeah. by doing. We're going to have dry ice cleaning with Dryce and Scott Ailes. So dry ice cleaning. Dry ice cleaning. It's got it the coolest thing for like doing engine compartment detailing or work on the frame because everything melts it's just it's ice it just melts but it's still abrasive enough when it's cold to go in and abrade whatever the gunk is you're trying to remove wow, that's pretty cool so that's going to be at this five-day class we're going to have leather repair with color lock and brian guy we're going to have rock chip repair with touch up effects and lenny house we're going to have ppf and window tinning with e-man we're going to have growing and making money on a YouTube channel with Jason Otterness from uh, Chicago Auto I'm Pros. Out of fingers here. And we're going to have search engine optimization and making a functioning website with Chris D, D. Giovanni from Detailers Roadmap. We're going to have mobile detailing rigs with Tony Ralda, flex power tools with Chris Metcalf, and Lake Country power tools and pads with uh, Bob Myers. We're going to have entrepreneurship, building a multi-million dollar empire with Britt Whitfield. And that's going to take place April 8th through the what 12th. About detail? There's one more. Uh, no, oh. You cannot read that one. <laughs> That's the tiniest one there. And, of course, Jim Lefebvre will be there, the head chemist and owner of Dr. See, Jim, I made sure he remembered you. And he can answer all your chemistry questions. It's always fun to talk to a real chemist. But that's Monday through Friday, Chicago, Illinois, April 8th through April 12th. And you can get more information, of course, on the Dr. Beasley's website. Now, is there website. still ava uh, available spaces Still seats that? available. Okay. And, and also, where do they go to get all the information? DrBeasley's.com. Okay. And my next three-day class here, so that's where you learn paint correction, dry sanding cool cars and boat detailing all three of the most popular topics the most profitable topics in a single weekend is coming up may 3rd 4th and 5th the first week first weekend into may and then i have a one day class on june 8th so okay. mark your calendars and those are all down here in stewart the 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 three day and the one day are going to be here the five days in chicago illinois okay uh did you already have your one in california or that but that one went by the wayside i okay. guess we were ruffling way too many feathers having mike phillips come out to california and someone else's territory okay all right well there you go <laughs> um enough said on that sorry i just remember that it's okay um so with that being said i really hope that you guys learned something today take a little bit of these tips and take it with you along the way that's the reason why we do these things 
And if you want to see more about this, I'm sure Mike will be doing a write-up and he'll be posting it to all of his socials over at the website and stuff so you can actually sit down and actually digest everything that was dropped here in the last 45 minutes. Yep. And anything else? If, if you go to my Instagram page, I shot three short videos that actually showed the prep work to do this type of work, which is you know, interesting. I'll show you how to set up for it. All right. Well, that being said, remember, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, Mike, I'm going to go this way. You, you can do, do that the other half. I got to do the other half of this window. All right. Say bye, Mike. Bye now.